Welcome everyone to this webinar being delivered by the HSC on their recently launched Dust Kills campaign. I'm Nat Chalakum, Vice Chair of the IOSH Construction Group, and perhaps not who you were expecting to see hosting today's session, but unfortunately Jimmy Quinn is unable to join us. So welcome to this webinar. As you may be aware, each year in the construction industry, there are thousands of preventable cases of ill health caused by lung disease due to past exposure to dust at work. These diseases often have a life-changing impact and can result in an early death. Throughout June, the HSE Construction Inspections Initiative has focused on respiratory risks with specific focus on dust control, checking employers and workers know the risks, plan their work and are using the right controls. The initiative is supported by the HSE Dust Kills campaign aimed at influencing employer behaviour by encouraging builders to download free guidance and advice. There is also information to support workers, helping them to understand the risks and how they still stay healthy. Through the campaign, the HSC has partnered with construction and occupational health organisations, including IOSH, to highlight the health risks to construction workers and control measures required on site to prevent exposure to dust. On behalf of IOSH, we are delighted to be able to support this initiative and it gives me great pleasure to now introduce our panel from the HSE to deliver today's session. First up, we have Joanne Mitchell. Joanne is an inspector with the HSE and currently works in a regulatory support team in the construction sector. She joined HSE in 1999 and has undertaken operational roles, inspecting, investigating and enforcing health and safety matters in a variety of industries with a wide range of duty holders from the very small scale construction contractors to multinational operators of petrochemical plants. Her current areas of responsibility include the very broad topic, occupational lung disease, which involves working with stakeholder groups to influence improvements in standards. She also has an inward facing role to provide advice to construction colleagues about the industry practices and enforcement benchmarks. She has been a member of the Respiratory Risks Campaign planning team for the last three campaigns, where she ensures that the guidance available is current and accurate. So welcome, Joanne, and thank you for joining us today. Joining Joanne, we also have Sarah Shaw, Head of Construction Policy and Sector at HSE. Sarah is a HSE inspector by background. She previously led the HSE Construction Operations team for Yorkshire, North East and Scotland. Since August 2021, Sarah has been head of the policy and sector unit for construction, leading work focused on providing corporate and parliamentary support to senior officials in the Department of Construction Strategy, developing the regulatory work program for construction, providing frontline support to HSE visiting staff and considering the impact of new technology and innovation on occupational health and safety objectives and managing the asbestos license regime. She has been a member of the Respiratory Risk Campaign Planning Team for the last three years, leading on industry engagement and ensuring construction divisions work matches the HSE's strategic direction on health. So welcome, Sarah, and thank you both for taking the time out today to talk to us through the campaign in a little more detail. So I'm going to hand over to both of you and like our listeners today, look forward to your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nat. Thank you, Joanne. And thank you, everybody. Um, it's great to have this opportunity to speak to so many people um, about our health campaign work in HSC. So, so thank you for that opportunity for this opportunity. I'm going to start by um, talking a little bit about context. So I'm going to tell you about the context and approach to our campaign work. We're going to tell you about the findings from a pre previous campaign that was in October last year, and then more broadly to uh, at the end to, to open up and talk about health campaigns more generally uh, that link with the strategy. So first of all, um, HSC has just not launched its new 10 year strategy, protecting people and places. You may well have, have seen this. Um, uh, published in May on our, on our website and I think we'll make the link available to you so that if you haven't seen it you can get the link directly. So it's called Protecting People and Places um, and it basically recognises that the, the world of work and society is, is changing and HSE must respond to that um, and that's what this new strategy is all, is all about. 
Um, so HSE also has some new responsibilities, uh, not least the building safety regulator in there. So we have to reflect that too, in terms of how we work and how we operate. That doesn't mean the traditional work that we do and the traditional risks have gone away, um, but we also want to make sure that we're concentrating on those areas and focusing on areas where we, we need to give most uh, attention, so where the highest risks are uh, and where we can have greatest impact and benefit. So that's what that strategy is all about. And this is our chief executive, Sarah Alban. She's driving HSE's new strategy and purpose, um, operating at a different level to us, obviously, but working, making sure that all the wider stakeholders and that we're joined up across government, because much of what we do as a cross government and cross uh, initiative um, piece to it. Uh, building safety is a good example of that, construction is a good example, and more broadly. So that's Sarah Alban, who's our, our chief executive, if you've not come across her before. And within that strategy, the very first objective is to reduce work-related ill health. And this has been done under a campaign approach to focus on the three biggest uh, problem areas, occupational lung disease. And you've, you've heard that we're already involved in the respiratory um, campaign this month. Musculoskeletal disorders is something we're going to be picking up later in the year. So that's our moving and moving and handling materials and then work related stress and mental health. Um, we're having a campaigning approach that's through that work right uh, campaign and it's got its own separate website um, for us to, to focus in on that and, uh, and strengthen our impact. So what does this mean for construction? For construction, we want to be preventive. We want to stop workers suffering ill health in the first place. So we're picking up this work-related ill health strategic objective number one. We've always looked at health, we've always considered it, but it has been a bit of a Cinderella subject over the years. Um, and this work year, we've got two specific inspection supported campaigns. Um, the first one, as I mentioned, we're in, in, in coming to an end at the end of uh, tomorrow, in fact, which is focused on respiratory risks, um, where our inspectors are out on site, as well as being uh, enhancing what we're doing through communications. Um, and then in October, we'll be moving on to that um, planned inspection initiative relating to musculoskeletal risks in construction. And we also have plans for work-related stress and mental health, which I'll touch on a bit later on. But now I want to show you um, a video. Um, we're using this as part of our current um, communications on the June dust campaign. This is our chief executive, um, um, uh, sorry, chief medical advisor, Professor David Fishwick. And he's going to sort of, he gives a basic kind of, a simple message about uh, risks due to respiratory uh, exposure to dust in construction and more broadly. Um, and it really just focusing on why prevention is so important. And then Joanne's gonna pick up from there to give you something, uh, some details about our last campaign that was on respiratory risk. And she can talk you through some of the findings and the approach that, uh, that we, we, uh, we took. But first of all, the, the video, so, and then you'll, you'll hear from Joanne. It's a fact that breathing in construction dust can cause serious lung diseases and bring about an early death. I see patients every week in my NHS chest clinic with severe lung diseases caused primarily by breathing in hazardous substances at work, including dusts. The lungs are precious to us and only complain in a limited number of ways when something is wrong. You know, breathlessness, wheezing and coughing are the commonest signs. When people seek medical help, sometimes horrible looking chest x-rays and scans reveal the extent of that damage. By the time your lungs complain, it's likely that the damage to the lung tissue is too far gone to repair. And unfortunately, many of these lung diseases are not easily reversible. Lung diseases are pretty much completely irreversible if caused by work. So the only cure to these problems is to prevent them in the first place. 
Thank you, Sarah. Um, as Sarah said, I'm just going to sort of take probably 20 minutes of your time to talk about the HSE Construction Division Health Campaigns. Health Campaign, which ran last October, which, like this month's campaign, is focusing on respiratory risks to construction workers. As Sarah has explained, this campaign was part of a cross HSE initiative, really to raise the, raise the profile of this issue across all sectors of industry. We brand it a campaign as it encompasses both on-site inspections and a planned communication strategy with industry support. Looking at sort of targeting sites and activities, we want to make sure that we go to the right places. So we're refining our targeting and intelligence indicators to align levels of compliance with different groups. So whether that be the trade or the sector that we're looking at or site size, because we want to continually improve our targeting to those who are creating the risk. So a little bit about the context and approach to our campaigns. Um, we're trying to sort of uh, ensure that we've got some comparative data with our various campaigns that we've run for a number of years. Because um, we want to improve the intelligence that we've got with the aim of say, targeting our efforts and actions to those who are creating the risk. So we want to achieve sustained compliance. The last campaign in October, we had to, um, we were in the middle of the pandemic, so we also needed to address COVID controls. So we did have to slightly adjust the targeting of our sites, so we difficult to make direct comparisons from the results from the October campaign. So every inspection included a COVID check to ensure the safety of our staff in advance of them carrying out an inspection, as well as them checking the COVID controls in, on site. So part of this was that welfare was looked at 100% of the site inspections. <clears throat> the aim was to deliver a, a, yeah, a thousand health focused inspections, looking at construction dusts. So this would be respirable crystalline silica, RCS, wood dust, which these inspections over contribute to the overall HSE's proactive inspection target. The aim, the final number of inspections exceeded um, a thousand that we, we'd hoped for. Um, as part of the campaign, we continued enhancing our communications to support the initiative with an, a dedicated communications resource. So whilst this is primarily a health initiative, we accept that matters of evident concern, so safety issues that the inspectors come across need to be dealt with first. So all of the enforcement during this initiative doesn't necessarily relate to just health. Now, there's a plethora of guidance available on managing construction dusts available, whether that be from HSA or from external bodies. What you do to protect yourself, your workers, your workmates from occupational lung disease. So I'm not proposing to actually cover it in this slide today. But what I thought would be useful for this for, you, for this audience and for yourselves is um, to make you aware of the operational guidance that's, that's available on our website. This is um, this guidance sets out for inspectors what the expectations are in relation to inspecting and enforcing when they find inadequate controls in place in relation to construction dust. So it's internal guidance for inspectors, but it's publicly available. And what you've got on the screen here is a screenshot of the, of the web page. And I've highlighted the, the specific enforcement guide, uh, operational guidance about construction dusts. If you look through this, this complete list, you'll also find one, an, an operational guide about moving and handling, which ties into the proposed October Health Initiative. So it gives, it sets out um, a structure for inspectors and it focuses on common tasks and prioritizes those with the potential for significant exposure and risk of ill health. Now the control of dust is a priority for all HSE inspectors, um, but this guidance assists construction inspectors in particular in deciding what action they may need to take under the Control of Substances Hazardous Health Regulation, so COSH, or um, Construction Design and Management Reg, so CDM, where they see um, inadequate control measures in place to manage the risks. 
So the operational guide deals with respiratory risks from dust. So as I say, RCS, wood, and other dust. It doesn't cover asbestos because that's in other guidance, and it doesn't cover fume either because that's covered elsewhere. And as I say, the link to this guidance will be included in the chat and, and the papers you provide, you, you receive afterwards. So I'm just gonna go into a little bit of detail about the document. And one of the things I wanted to draw your attention to is that the, 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 the guidance includes a sort of structure for determining the, the task related risk. And it breaks it down into these, these, six, key, these six key areas for you to think about. What is the substance that you're actually seeing? What is the task? Does it involve um, mechanical equipment that will be generating a high degree of dust? What's the duration and frequency of the work? Whereabouts is it taking place? Is it in an enclosed location or is it outside? What equipment and controls have you got in place presently and who's, who's involved? Is it a single person, a single worker affected or is it could be a, 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 the wider population? So I'd recommend you sort of have a think about, have a look at the work that you assess or have a or, or look at and look at it in the same way. But the key is to prioritize ways of minimizing on-site risk. So what control measures you've got in place? And importantly, what arrangements have you got in place to ensure that they are being used? As opposed to looking at monitoring the health of the symptoms, i.e. health surveillance, because we want to ensure that um, people's exposure to to just is, is eliminated so far as reasonably, as far as possible. And just a word about the final sentence on this on this slide. The principles of good control under under COSH Schedule Two A requires that any control measures that are put in place they don't increase the overall risk to health and safety. So if I give an example in relation to that, if you had some work that was being undertaken at height and you decided that you wanted to um, ensure that you, you, you guys were using on-tool extraction, you'd need, to include, you'd need to ensure that you weren't introducing any sort of potential fall risks or increasing the risk in relation to manual handling by, um, ensure, by um, requiring that, that, that control to be used. And interestingly, one of the inspectors came across a similar sort of situation when they were out in this campaign and that they found a, a, a worker amazing control in relation to the dust, um, on tool extraction and everything. Unfortunately, the, the assessment hadn't really picked up that the person also needed to wear um, hearing protection. And unfortunately, his hearing protection was not compatible with his hard hat. So as I say, always look in the, in, at the bigger picture and ensure that you're not introducing any other risks. So just moving on to the outputs from the October campaign, it was a month long inspection and it was there were over a thousand visits and 200 enforcement notices and the, and the respiratory risks. So it focused on dust and wood, dust, respiratory crystal silica, other dusts, um, wood and asbestos. So just to give you a little bit of detail about what happened. This slide shows the type of sites we visited and the numbers of contractors on those various sites. As you'll see, we focused on the smaller sites with over 50% of the sites visited having less than nine workers. So I'm just gonna move temporarily away from the actual inspection side of the, the campaign to just talk about um, the, the, the communication, the, 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 the further reach of the campaign. So I've got here a video that was produced actually for the campaign that we're just ending, which shows one of our inspectors out and about, which was posted on various social media channels. So maybe some of you have seen it. Hello, so I'm Sarah Hill, one of Her Majesty's Inspectors of Health and Safety, and I work in our construction division. I'm working across the West Midlands along with a number of my colleagues, and we're out and about throughout the whole month of June. And one of the key areas that we're gonna be looking at throughout the month of June is occupational lung disease and construction workers who are being exposed to dust within their line of work. So construction workers are dying every single week from lung diseases and many more are suffer from chronic illnesses and these are associated to the dust that they've been exposed to at work. There is a legal duty for employers to make sure that they're controlling those risks and one of the things that we're looking at when we're out on site is to make sure that employers are adequately controlling that risk 
and that workers are not being exposed unnecessarily to dust such as silica dust when they're working on construction sites. If you want more information about the risks associated with silica dust and dust on construction sites, the hsc.gov.uk website has lots of information for you. And if you're working across the West Midlands, I may be seeing you soon. So what did we find in October? <clears throat> well, we've, action was required at 66% of the sites. And action in our terminology here means that we had to use one of our regulatory tools so whether that be providing verbal advice, written correspondence, or take enforcement, and also, I suppose, including considering prosecution. The domestic refurbishment was the lowest performing sector, and the smallest sites were where we saw the lowest levels of compliance. In contrast, uh, major projects and the larger sites were where we saw the highest level of compliance. And Sarah, when she returns to this, to this webinar, will provide some information um, some more details about what our partner during that campaign, Health and Construction Leadership Group, HCLG, what their members found during their visits and the surveys they did during the campaign. So as I said, we would, and the October campaign took, part, took place during the, the COVID pandemic. So one of the things we looked at 100% of inspections was welfare. And when I talk about uh, welfare, I'm talking with, we're talking about the requirements under CDM Schedule 2, so the minimum welfare facilities required for a construction site. And again, the overall the, the results for welfare mirrored the overall results in that it was the smaller sites and those engaged in domestic refurbishment that really were the less were the least compliant. So with the caveat of it's difficult to compare the various campaigns. Um, we did see an improvement in compliance in welfare, and these improvements were seen across all sectors and all sides of sites. And with potential, there is the, 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 the fact that COVID was, was heightened people's awareness about the need for good welfare arrangements. So whether that be access to hot and cold running water, clean toilets, somewhere to sit and have a break. Um, so that was a positive thing to see. So I'm going to move away now from the inspection side of the campaign to the coming to the communications and what we what what um, what sources and how we, we communicated about the HC campaign. So here's a slide that shows the reach of the campaign. So we use various channels or platforms um, to to communicate about the, the health initiative. So our construction e bulletin is one that's read by. 191,000 people. Um, we get a very high rate of people actually opening the email, just under 70%. And then further engaged readers, people who go onto the website um, to follow the links from the e-bulletin is, is significant as well at 4.5%. At we use a variety of sort of social media channels to promote the campaign. Um, you can see the number of impressions, so the number of um, times people looked at the various posts that we put on, and this engagement figure of 2.7%, that relates to those people who are sharing or commenting or visiting the website from those, from those, um, those things, which is really positive. And our findings is that um, LinkedIn is just marginally one of our best performing channels for the, for the campaign. We also used the Workrite um, microsite, so we're using that for all HSE campaigns. Um, it, it provides a limited amount of information for, for people to sort of introduce them to the topic. And then it hopefully steers them towards a HSE website if they need a bit more information. So we can see the numbers of um, individual sort of visitors there. And what we also found that we had a good dwell time. So just under three minutes, people were on the website. So it hopefully shows a high level of engagement with them actually reading the content and we also sort of try we also do more traditional um coverage communications in that we had seven pub, seven um, articles published in traditional trade press as i say we want to understand how do we do we reach those hard to reach people so when the inspectors are out on site they have a, a mandatory question that they they're asked to Ask the, they're asked to ask, and that 
is, were you aware that HSE were carried out health focused inspections? And as you can see, around a third, a third of the people we came across were, so that's positive. And of those third, of the, of the third of them who did know about the campaign, just over half, just, just under half, had actually done something about it. And what we found when we asked the follow-up question was that they'd maybe done a toolbox talk or they'd looked at the website. So that's, that's really positive. But one statistic I was going to pull out to talk about, just to, to identify, was that what we found was that those who had heard about the campaign were more compliant with the law, um, actually about twice as compliant so, as those who hadn't heard about the campaign. So that's something we're going to pull, try and see if we can look at again this year. And thank you all very much for um, inputting into our, our stats. Um, because we asked you when you signed up to this webinar, um, had you heard of the campaign? And there's a bit of free text there for you to tell us where you had learned about it. So it was really good to see, this is very raw data for this, but it's, it, it's good to see that HC's reference there and IOSH, um, but also interestingly, it's to see that LinkedIn is also pulled up there. So that's also telling us that's, that's a means in which we're, um, the message is landing. But the uh, one potential on the on the point is that LinkedIn is is uh, engaging with a, with already with an already engaged um, uh, sector of the, the industry. So in our feedback sheet that we'll ask we'll ask you to fill in at the end, we've got some sort of questions about how do we reach those people who we're not reaching at the moment to ensure that we have the maximum reach to ensure that the health and safety message um, is is promoted and. Um, acted upon as, as widely as possible. So I'm now going to move back onto the in outputs from the campaign and I'll talk some more about the enforcement notices that were issued. So here we've got a slide that just sort of summarises what, what happened. So there were overall 200 notices issued. Um, as I said, it's, yeah, at the top of the table, we've got the spread of the notices. Um, the, we've got the health column but we could also define the welfare um, notices falling under the health banner. And there will also be a degree of the health and safety management ones that will be related to health risks identified on site. So that's, but we can also see there's a significant proportion there in relation to safety. The bottom table shows the range of legislation that was used in those enforcement notices. And there's a good range of sort of health um, regulations applied. So that, that's positive to see that we were dealing with the health issues on site as well. So, so that, that caveat about um, comparison, but there were more notices served over, overall and there was more of a focus on health issues. So inspectors will get into the health issues, which, which is what we want to see. So I'm just gonna move on to my final slide about the October um, initiative. And I've just got some headlines that I thought would be useful to share. So here's a summary of the findings in relation to um, silica, respiratory sensitizers, which is primarily wood, but could also be solvents or isocyanates and asbestos. So the main findings in relation to silica was unfortunately that RPE wasn't provided or it wasn't face fit tested. Um, the image shows, unfortunately, that there was a, with, when we were dealing with wood dust, there was a general lack of control at source. And with asbestos, the most common issue was in relation to refurbishment and demolition surveys, either that they weren't done or that they weren't available on site to be to be looked at, to be verified that they had been done. So I'm now going to pan back to Sarah, who's going to explain how we worked with our partner Health and Construction Leadership Camp Counts Group, sorry, HCLG during the October campaign. And she'll also explain what other health campaigns HC has HD Construction Division has planned for the remainder this year. Thank you, thank you, Joanne. Thanks very much. So, Joanne's mentioned that we um, we worked with um, a number of stakeholders. Um, and we tried to increase our comms. Um, significantly, we we're working with HCLG, uh, the Health and Construction Leadership Group. So, the Health and Construction Leadership Group. Um, there are approximately 300 members of the tier one sites, the higher, the bigger sites, 
Um, and they promoted the campaign through their various communication channels um, and, and their members, which was a, a, a very positive thing for us to do to, to get that reach into, into wider industry from, from, our, from our point of view. Um, so they used and they also uh, reached out for examples and for cases that uh, that might be useful for others to, to hear about. So uh, that was through the HCL, HCLG uh, members. And they also mirrored in a way uh, visits to their site surveys. And they understood what we were looking at in terms of our inspectors from our guidance and they did their own surveys. Um, they looked at um, a range of sites that they're, um, they're involved with and that they're operating. Um, and yes, we recognise that many of them are the bigger sites, but they, they had a broad range um, of, of site and sector activities. Um, and they also obviously reach out into using contractors, subcontractors, um, and provided good examples uh, for people. So um, they, 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 they did the full range of, of sites so that we can get a picture across the industry um, and, um, and, and then fed that back to us to be part of our intelligence for, for the campaign. And helpfully what they did was show good examples of how they saw people on their sites avoiding dust exposures in construction um, and there's a range of, of examples there um, the important point is not all of these are highly complicated they're not all expensive um, and it does help us to show what industry can do what pe what the construction industry is already doing to actually control um, dust uh, risks on site um, so the basics around sweeping, the, um, the local exhaust ventilation, not all of this is highly complicated or expensive. Um, and there was also some really helpful points about avoiding um, exposure by good planning, planning the work in advance, thinking through how tasks are going to be uh, to be done. Um, so things like, you know, preparing things off site, fabrication, the materials being used. Now, I appreciate that's not possible on every site, but it is the sort of thing that you can get, people can think about in terms of preventing um, the dust being generated in the first place. So that whole issue about prevention, uh, preventing exposure. And they also talked about where they found the, the biggest problems. So again, because this is industry generated, it helps to supplement our intelligence and our information. Um, so where they found the key dust generating tasks from their uh, site uh, visits um, and what the principal on site controls were that they found. So again, the basic things you might see like water suppression on tool extraction RPE. Um, and interestingly, it was a, a learning experience for them too, because where they found poor practice, um, and so they learned from the process as well, and understanding you know, what, what, what behaviours caused people to, to, to perhaps work in that way, or what was it that meant that, that, that people were operating in this way on some of the sites where they wouldn't have necessarily expected this to happen. And I think dry sweeping with brooms is a good example of that, where I think we all know um, the dust generation capability of that and quite a basic thing, but it was even happening on some of these bigger sites. So that was something that they could they could take away from this uh, this whole exercise. So they're, they're supporting our, our campaigns further and, um, and it's been very, uh, very, very positive relationship and we do work with industry in other ways through um, through, through stakeholder engagement through industry uh, companies promoting our campaign so it's all part of this reach that Joanne was talking about um, our inspectors can only achieve so much it's really important that they get out on site and that they see uh, and target particularly the smaller end but we want to get that reach out there to get the messages across to get information across to get that learning across as broadly and as with as greater impact as possible to get some sustained compliance and again that's why as Joanne explained we're trying to look at trends and we're trying to look at how things improve and change um, from campaign to campaign to, to, to hone our, ex, our, our operation to hone how we work and improve over time. 
So I'm now going to talk, um, as coming to the end, I'm going to talk about just a bit more about our further health campaigns. So over the last couple of years, we've really honed in on, on respiratory risk. Um, with the new strategy and the priorities, um, we're, we're, we're targeting more in those top three areas that I mentioned. Um, the, the, the dust one, as, which is where we're coming to an end this June, but in quarter three, we're looking at manual moving and handling and musculoskeletal disorders, and then what we're doing about working minds. And I should stress, it doesn't mean we only look at these three health topics. Our inspectors are out looking at various things on site and they'll pick things up, uh, but we're really just trying to target this and reach this and, 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 and emphasize the importance of these areas and our reach through communications to, to try and have a greater impact on these areas that are causing the most issue. So coming up in October, we've got our moving and handling campaign. So you'll start to see uh, material coming out to advertise that, to promote that. We'll be working with our various stakeholders, including IOSH, to actually promote that and to explain what we're going to be doing. It'll last throughout the month of October. It is one that's supported by site inspection with our inspectors going out. Um, and it picks up on the well-known issue of musculoskeletal uh, disorders, the injuries and conditions that, that affect people physically and in terms of their joints and backs. And in construction, particularly an issue with, with, with the, the nature of the physical work um, and the impact that has on, um, on individuals and business and society. People can't work, it affects their health. They can't earn money and also they can't, um, they can't you know, um, promote um, and, and move on to, to, to do um, other things in their lives, you know, like looking after their families, etc. cetera. So, um, so these are the, the economic and the, the moral arguments towards doing, to, towards focusing on that area in construction. And then the last area um, is the work-related stress and mental Ill, Ill health. And I mentioned at the beginning that this is a, a cross-divisional, cross-HSE initiative called Working Minds. Um, it's looking at the, the issue of stress, depression, anxiety um, within the working population. Um, it's the second big, biggest cause of work-related ill health in the construction industry. And our focus is on prevention, pre promoting and tackling the problem early, taking positive action. You can see that um, we've, we've already tried to promote and produce some materials to help people do this. Uh, that talking toolkit is aimed at small businesses and it's aimed at helping people have the conversation approach the topic which is probably more difficult than other topics so that's constantly being promoted through our various channels um, and we're also working with other stakeholders in construction division there's a group known as mates in mind who do an awful lot of work in this area and we're working alongside uh, them um, in their in their campaigning to actually look at um, work related and mental ill health in construction and there'll be other focused events throughout the year uh, that, uh, that pick up and target a particular area. So please look out for those too. Uh, they're constant across the, across the whole year in terms of the general topic, but then we will hone in on construction uh, areas throughout the year. So that's something that's on, on all the time, as it were, that we want to be, uh, do, we want to be promoting and working with. So that is the the end of our uh, presentations about um, our campaigning on health.